Okay. So first of all, guys, say hi to YouTube. But yeah, today we're here to talk about how to beat Yumi Adachi and the team Yumi Adachi. So for you guys that aren't as familiar with BB Tag, um, even if you aren't, you've probably heard of people complaining about Yumi and Adachi. They're both strong characters and they're both very easy to play. And because of that, they get a lot of hate. And arguably for good reason, they are some of the strongest characters in the game. And the team Yumi Adachi is quite arguably the strongest in the game. And we have a few people over in America that play the team. We have a few people over in Japan that play the team and they all do very well. But I want to say that this team's not unbeatable and you do have a lot of options and we're going to talk about that. So if you take a look, I put together just a, a few slide deck and actually I, I worked with a few of the Yumiadachi players such as you know, Game Wizard, Monkey, Base to help create this to kind of give you a summarized version of everything you need to know to beat this team. But in order to beat a team, I think you need to first learn how to beat the specific characters. There'll be a link to this in the Twitch stream and in the description below um, for the YouTube video. So let's start off with Yumi, right? The first portion here is about Yumi's mix. So the 214 AC mix, you would think it's an unblockable high low, right? Oh, she always gets a 50-50. Looks like this, right? Right, so in theory she could get a 50-50 anytime she makes you block 204A, but there's a few gaps in this. One of the things is that there's a 5 frame difference in timing so that you can actually fuzzy it, which means that you can block high and then block low, and you can actually block both of the mix up, right? She does have ways to beat this, such as doing a delayed overhead, but they're kind of risky. One of the things you can also do is you can actually mash it. Doesn't look like there's a gap, but there actually is. If you time it right. Okay, I guess you can't. <laughs> you can definitely match the low. But let me test this out. Because I thought you actually could beat this with match. Oh, there we go. My guess is my timing is just not where it should be. But as you guys can see, it does work sometimes. The other thing you can do is you can actually hold 4P and block stun. But if you do it like that, the 4P will actually beat both of the follow-ups. It's also a good opportunity to push block, right? Because if they do that, um, some characters can actually get a punish. Right? Like I just punished that just for knowing when to push block. So if there's ever a time you want to push block Yumi, it's after blocking the 214A. And you guys can see here, here's another link. There's some other options you can do it. Um, 5VB has a gap that you can DP or super in between. That's pretty self-explanatory. A lot of Yumi's will just autopilot this string. There's always a gap there. So you want to make them think twice about autopiloting that because then they will drop some confirms and it makes the button a lot less strong if you can't always follow up with that. So you got a DP, you can super, can do anything invincible in between. This one's pretty cool. If you block JC in the air low to the ground, you can actually punish it. And I see a lot of people get away with this. So what this looks like. But yeah, see how I was blocking there? And Yumi still got a punish on Yumi's jump C. Oh yeah, if you're in a sandwich or CC and Yumi does B Rekka, make sure you push block. They can they basically get a 50-50 active switch and it's her best starter. If you take that starter, you're fucked no matter what. You really don't want to take that. I would I would focus on, because there is the startup of the Rekka, you can react to that, you can push block, and you don't have to take the 50-50 from that. And that 50-50 most likely will kill you. Uh, mix up forward tech and back tech in the corner. So this is another thing you have to be wary of, is that Yumi actually doesn't get the best corner Oki. Okay. She doesn't get like a safe jump that covers all techs, for example. So this is an example. And if you want to catch the back tech, you gotta go backwards. But if you go for a safe jump on the back tech, you can actually forward tech out of that, right? So you really want to mix up the two because the Yumi half player has to 
adjust their setup depending on what you're actually trying to do. If you always back tech, then they're gonna, you know, always do the safe jump or they're gonna do the cross up jump C. I personally like teching out forward more often than not. Yeah, that's true. She can do a just backdash 5P, but it's not as strong as something like a safe jump or some of the other things that other characters can do. But yeah, she she does have media assist timings that can't cover everything. But make sure you mix up both because you want to force the Yumi player to do that backdash 5P. And she gives up a little bit of mix when she does that. Uh, so burst points. You want to be careful about bursting just her regular strength because she can cancel into 5B. I mean, uh, 2B. And get a full combo for it, right? So some of the times you want to burst are her 5B. I can't do anything there. If you burst this point, I can't cancel on the DP, I can't cancel on the super. Doesn't matter. So you really want to focus on that point. Another point is... You only really get a uh, DP there. I think you could... But you can't jump cancel that, right? And if you do it late, you can't even cancel the DP. So you can kind of react to that too. You have to do it a little bit late on the 5vb. I also recommend bursting Rekka, but you have to be careful because some characters, if you burst a 214ba, the burst will whiff, and then you get a full punch on the Rekka, which is actually, I mean, on the burst, which is actually kind of crazy, and you get full combo. I mean, this is kind of obvious, but newer players might not notice. Never burst after the aerial wave. It's always safe, no matter what. And it's actually crazy like how many good players will try to burst after aerial rave and just hope they, the opponent fucks up, but it's never gonna work out in your favor. So what does this look like? I'll just record it real quick. So it doesn't matter how hard you mash burst here, it's gonna be bursting. And then you just die for, uh, because it's Yumi, she shits out damage, you die for bursting there. All right, so let's talk about Adachi. So one thing people don't know, and I see people get clipped by a lot, is empty jump low from Adachi. And this actually is not a mix-up. And let me show you why. I'll do it super low to the ground, just so you guys can see. And now you think that, that you can react, because a lot of characters, they're delayed air dash. It's pretty much unreactable, right? That's, that's impossible to react to compared to her low. But here? You see how late that comes out? And there's only our option is empty jump low. Don't expect there to be a delayed air dash that is unreactable. So always just block low after the empty jump and then react to the air dash. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter whether you use macro or 6-6. Six, six. Because if you, if you do jump A right away, it'll just whiff. Hey, watch. See? It doesn't matter if it comes out instantly because if you make it come out instantly, it just whiffs. If Adachi is going to do um, air dash mix up, you have to delay it. So it doesn't really matter whether you do 6-6 six, six or uh, macro there. And Adachi's other two jump normals don't hit overhead, so you don't have to worry about them either. Um, so push blocking, right? Persona moves don't get pushed back. Um, so I personally think you should, in general, try to save your push block against Adachi. Or wait for him to do like like a stand A, crouch A, that sort of thing. Because that actually matters if you push block it. Same thing with BZO. You don't really want to push block BZO, especially at the beginning. You're just wasting meter at that point, right? I don't care how scared you are of BZO. The only time I would recommend push blocking BZO is at the very end. So I'll show you what happens. See, when I push block the beginning, that's terrible, right? It basically did nothing. But when I push block at the end, you create a little bit of a gap and then you can press the button in between. Mash after blocking 214C in the air, then jump cancel. So that's a typo, it's 236. <laughs> we, we fixed those typos. So if Adachi does 236C in the air and then jump can, you can mash and then jump cancel. You don't have to worry about the follow up because he can frame trap after, but all the frame traps are pretty slow. So let's show you what that looks like. So that's an example of something you can do. You can also do something like this. And when he lands, he can do that, right? But if you break the persona, you jump cancel, you pretty much get out of jail free. 
The only thing he can really do to counter that is 236C, and that also loses to just mashing jab and jumping. On the ground, that's a little riskier, but when he does this, he's actually minus after that. And so you want to press a button, because no matter what he does, if he masters a jab or he cancels into a special, you can beat him out there. So let me show you what that looks like. See? You can actually press a button there. And Blake can too. I think I just have to press 2A. Yeah, I have to press a little bit of uh, a faster thing. Uh, is A0 being minus 20 on block also a typo? No, it's actually not a typo. Oh, A0 is minus 15, not minus 20? I don't know why I was thinking minus 20. He does get like some additional frame advantage if he does in the air, but on the ground. So for example, with the Kotsky, I can actually just do reversal super and it'll punish. So you see, I'm, I'm holding block, I'm holding block. See, that's a punch. Because again, my super is fast enough. And yeah, that is true. They usually do it from afar. But even at that distance, yeah. And yeah, you guys are right. Like AZ is typically done with assist. But let's take, for example, they do something like this shit. There's a gap in between there. See, I actually still get a punish there. Because a lot of times when you do AZO plus assist, there's a gap. So just keep that in mind that there are different ways to deal with it. And we'll talk more about that in the Dachi Yumi section. But yeah, that's how you deal with 236E. React to command grab. Um, the 5B can jump cancel too. There's just general things, but um, you know, Dachi doesn't really have mix besides the command grab, but it has a pretty long startup, so you can't react to it. And then the 5B can be jump canceled, so if you ever see him do a 5B, the most common thing is going to be like air dash forward, and you can re react to Pantire, so just keep that in mind. Uh, anything else? Yeah, his DP is kind of shitty. It's a counter DP, but it's only invulnerable for the first 25 frames. It's always going to come out, right? So there's like certain setups you can do. See, for example, that was a counter hit because I just delayed my jump normal. But even like just dancing around them. Okay, you see it? You get a full punch. So it's it's not really the best DP. Definitely try to play around that. And then burst points. So 5 AA cancel. A lot of characters, when they do like a 5 AA move where it's rapid hitting like that, you would think that he could jump cancel. But he actually can not jump cancel until the last hit. You see that? So because of that, you can actually burst. And he can't really do anything about it. The other thing is, if he does jump C, you can also react with burst. When he, when you see that jump C come out, you got all day to burst. And he can't punish that. So definitely, I, I like to keep an eye on those two burst points. Let's talk about Dachi Yumi. Not really too much because once you deal with the individual characters, that kind of covers a lot of it. Their assists are on the slower side. You can take advantage of that. Just something to consider. You can counter a call with assist a lot easier because, you know, Adachi 6P is pretty slow, Yumi 6P is pretty slow. So you can just kind of throw your assist out there more often than like other characters. And I do recommend trying to save your push block meter for when Yumi's on the screen because that's usually when the, the mix up actually happens. Um, spend less push block on Adachi since again push blocking the persona doesn't really do that much. BZO mix we kind of already covered. AZO plus 6P and 6P's BZO they both have a gap right. So let's record that and show you guys. So the typical thing you'll see from a uh, Yumi Adachi if you do it right it combos. Yeah. It looks like that right. So that's usually what you see and then Yumi runs up and unblockable DPs you and then get a combo, right? That's not what you want to have happen. And so different characters have different options. Again, I could uh, super there. But depending on the range, I can jump out. I can also forward jump, super forward jump. And like kind of get away there. And keep in mind, it's kind of hard. I mean, that's really what I do with Akatsuki, but for example, if your character has air mobility, you can use both of these certain situations, which Akatsuki doesn't have air mobility. But for example, if I'm Blake, I'll super jump in between the 
6P and the BZO, and then I get away and I just kind of fly around. And other characters can do this too. For example, Ruby and some of the other thick characters I think are strong against this team. They can all kind of fly around and do certain things in between the, uh, the, the 6P and the BZO. See, so you can do something like that and it's really hard for Yumi to catch you. And you know, you make them waste that um, assist meter and some of Dachi's help for that. Yeah, AZO, 6P, BZO, Active Switch is, is a free burst point. So just keep in mind that when Adachis do this, typically they will act a switch because you want to get the free mix. So you should consider bursting there. And you kind of get out of that situation too. Instead of taking the uh, the resulting 50-50 that comes with uh, Yumi taking advantage of you blocking BZO. So you can burst there and it's actually not a bad strategy half the time. And of course, best strategy is just don't let Adachi call BZO, right? If you block the AZO, you know, that means that you probably let him get some significant amount of space. Easier said than done, right? But counter calling assist, playing strong neutral, staying on their ass, um, those are usually the best ways to deal with something like that. Um, so recommended characters are typically the ones that can either deal with the BZO mix up well. So that means either play in the air or neutral skip or just play strong enough neutral that Adachi can't get the ZO out. And so some examples of these characters, according to Base, Game Wizard, um, Monkey are Carmine, Ruby, Nine, Seth, Yu, Jubei, Hilda if you're in Japan because, you know, Hilda's top tier in Japan. <laughs> but if you're not in Japan, you probably shouldn't play Hilda against Yumi Adachi. I, I personally, I think Hilda is okay. I think he do she does well against the Adachi portion, but not the Yumi portion of the team. Blake does pretty well too, to per Eon's point, um, just because you can fly around. Akatsuki does okay, same reasons. So you definitely got some options, and this is an exhaustive list who've, who does well. And that's pretty much all I got. Um, you know, credits, shoutouts to Monkey, Game Wizard, Eon, Base for helping with the guide. Um, definitely appreciate it. And if you want to see matches, definitely check out this link. Keep on rocking, right? There's definitely a lot of source material to look at. All right, other than that, any questions, guys? Where's the guy that deals with Seth EX Crossup into CC? I mean, people got to play Seth, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> No one plays this character. It's crazy.